When it comes to Aaron Glenn's defense, there have been a lot of people that have been very vocal about his inability to get results on the field. But according to Dan Campbell, a recently acquired player he believes could be the one that could unlock the true potential of the defense. We're going to talk about it in today's episode, folks, so stay tuned. What are we? What makes us what we are and what we're going to be? It's grit. It's what we started with last year, guys. It doesn't matter if you have one ass cheek and three toes, I will beat your ass. Can definitely compete with, with, with the big dogs. 10, 5, end zone, touchdown Detroit Lions. You guys, you guys are unbelievable, man. I, I'm telling you. We are driven by Detroit. Hello, Lions fans, and welcome back once again for yet another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. I'm your host, David T. Pike, and as always, we're diving on in. So, here's the thing, folks. When it comes to Lions fans for this upcoming season, we're not thinking about just, you know, having a winning season. We're not thinking about just getting to the playoffs. We're not even thinking about winning a playoff game. Those expectations have already been met. Those expectations are already in the rearview mirror. For the Lions, for Lions fans, there is only one goal, there is only one expectation that they're thinking about. And that is that on everyone's collective minds, the goal is to get to and win a Super Bowl. Which, if you think about it, for a couple of years ago, that would have been a revolutionary thought for Lions fans and for the Lions to definitely think about. But... Now, this time around, it is definitely an achievable thought. It's not just a crazy thought. It's not just a revolutionary thought. The Lions and Lions fans definitely know that they can win a Super Bowl right now. However, while the Lions fans and the Lions themselves have the aspiration to make and win a Super Bowl, which is definitely plausible... The biggest question that everybody has on their mind right now, as far as Lions fans and analysts, is will they be able to do so with the current defensive crew that they have? Now, if you ask some Lions fans, the answer is almost definitively no. And what they're going to say is, I want to wait until after the draft before I make my final decision. Some people will be so adamant, they'll be like, as long as Aaron Glenn is a defensive coordinator, it's a definitive no. But, if you ask Dan Campbell this question, he will definitely tell you that the Lions absolutely can. Now, is this because of the players that have been acquired in the past through the draft? I would say to a certain extent, yes, because we have to understand something. You cannot discredit the growth that the players on the defense like Hutch, McNeil, Branch, Melifonwu, Kirby Joseph, Jack Campbell, and a lot of others have had over the last couple of years that have really helped the defense come along. Because it's like, listen, those pieces that Brad Holmes have drafted, they have helped, and they have helped immensely. Now, that's one side of the argument. That's one side of the coin. But if you were to ask Dan Campbell, the player that he thinks that could finally unlock the defense's true potential, it's cornerback Carlton Davis that they just traded for from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, <laughs> I'm sure to some fans, this might sound a little bit perplexing. This might sound a little bit weird because the first thing you're going to say is, well, how can a guy that we just literally traded for be the last piece that could potentially unlock a defense that we've been trying to get the defense to prove itself to be over the last three years? Well, again, the answer to that question was what Dan Campbell provided, and he provided it in a recent interview a couple of days back. But again, sometimes you have to wait till you kind of get all this evidence together to talk about it. But here's what Campbell said in regards to this whole thing. He's talking about Carlton Davis specifically. He said, there are just things he, and again, he's, he's specifically talking about Carlton Davis, can do where he can take this his side of the field away at times. Just to have some of that man goes a long way for the rest of the defense. And what Glenn is going to be able to call, man, that's going to help. That's really something we felt we haven't had here since we've been here. And again, that's what Dan Campbell is talking about for what Carlton Davis can provide to the defense. Now, we have to understand something here. For that to come from Dan Campbell for a newly acquired player, that's some pretty damn high praise. Because again, what do we know about Dan Campbell? Dan Campbell says the same thing for everybody. You have to earn it. You have to earn everything you receive and get from the team. So the fact that 
This guy has not yet had a practice with the Lions. The fact that this guy has not yet shown that he understands Glenn's scheme or any of that, but yet Campbell is simply saying, I think that this dude could go a long way to unlocking the defense. That's some pretty damn high praise. But that asks the question, is the praise worth it? Is it not worth it? Is it merited? Is it actually, you know, merited praise or is Dan Campbell kind of, you know, you know, tooting the horn a little too much here? So that's where, again, I start diving in. I start doing very, very deep analysis based on stats. So here's what we're going to find out. If you look at the stats, as I have said before with Carlton Davis in a previous episode, it's kind of a mixed bag with him. If you take a look at his career completion percentage that he's given up to wide receivers, it's pretty low. It's at a 57.9%. That's very good. And then if you take a look at his quarterback passer rating, it's not the greatest, but it's not too shabby either. It's at a 91.8, which for the NFL, again, that's pretty low for quarterbacks. Now, I will say this. While the career aspects look pretty good, what leaves me a little bit worried about this is that last year when he was at Tampa, he allowed a 64.6 completion percentage rate to wide receivers and a 107.4 passer rating. So that right there is a little bit troublesome to me. But again, that was just one year. If you actually go back a little bit further from 2019 to 2022, the actual stats from those couple of years actually kind of make it look like that Carlton Davis was making some pretty steady progress towards being a very good cornerback. Because if you take a look at those three years in particular, Carlton Davis gave up 195 completions to 350 attempts, which was for 55.7 completion percentage. That's very, very good. He only he gave up 2,413 yards with 17 touchdowns to 7 interceptions with a pass rating of 85.1. So, overall, that's not too bad. The yards is a little bad, and the touchdown-to-interception ratio is a little bad. But overall, the passer rating was decently low. The percentage completion rate was extremely low. Now, I know for some people, those stats are instantly going to cause them to balk a little bit at the whole 17 touchdowns, like I said. Because, again, when you take a look at a 17 touchdown to 7 interception ratio, that's still almost a freaking like 2.5 to 1 touchdown interception ratio. That's a little bit of a problem. But I'm going to just say this right now. Since 2019... When he gave up his most touchdowns, which, by the way, that was his second year in the league, so he was still kind of getting adapted to the NFL. If you take a look in 2020, 2021, and 2022, it's a lot more respectable difference of 15 touchdowns to 9 interceptions. So again, you start taking a look at the statistics a little bit more in depth. You start to get a little bit more of a picture that shows, okay, when he first started off as a rookie and as a second-year player, not that good. But over the next couple of years, he got very, very, he progressed a lot better. And then last year, he had a bit of a bad year. So then I started asking myself this question. I was like, okay, why? Why was that the case? What caused that blip on the radar? And that's where I started going into a whole bunch of other stuff here. Because this is where I then went back to Campbell to kind of get an idea, if you will, of what Carlton Davis can specifically do to unlock the defense. Again, if you listen to Campbell, he is correct in the belief that that Davis is the key, or how should I put this? It, better way to ask this question. Is Dan, is Dan Campbell correct in his belief that Carlton Davis can unlock Glenn's defense? Well, again, if you listen to Dan Campbell, it's not necessarily that Davis has great stats, but rather it's what he's going to allow Glenn, you know, to allow Dan Campbell and Aaron Glenn to do on the field. Because what did Dan Campbell specifically say as far as what Carlton Davis will be able to do for that defense? This is what he said. He said, what's funny is there's a lot of times where it really helps. Well, certainly third down, you want to play some man-to-man. Because he's talking about man-to-man defense here and wanting to get off the field. But also on base downs. Being able to play man is no different than being able to run the football or stop the run. It's kind of one of our core values to be a good team. You want to be able to play man when you're called upon. So yeah, this will certainly give AG more flexibility in what to call, I believe. So 
What Dan Campbell is specifically saying is that by having Carlton Davis in the secondary, it will allow them to call more man-to-man -man coverages, which if there's one thing Lions fans know, especially from last year, we were notorious for constantly running zone coverages. And in this, ad in, in this category, I will definitely agree with Campbell 100% that it gives Glenn more flexibility if that's the case. Because if you think about it, whether or not we're going to see the results, that remains to be seen. Obviously, we're not going to know that until next year. But if you think about this, again, I went to PFF, I checked the stats. Carlton Davis in 2023 was top 15. He was actually ranked number 14 in the NFL when it came to man coverage, according to PFF. And then if you take a look at the pass rating he allowed when he was in man coverage, it was a 75.1, which is extremely good. And so in man coverage overall, his grade was considered in the top five, the top 25. Uh, that was sorry, that was for the that was the passer rating. That was in the top 25. It was ranked 24th. Now, I know for some people they're going to ask this nat this natural second question. Well, how does that compare to Cameron Sutton, who would be the guy he's taking over? I'm glad you asked that because if you take a look at Cameron Sutton's stats and grades in the man coverage department, oh yeah. He's way, way better than Cameron Sutton. Again, I said that Carlton Davis was ranked number 14th in the NFL with his man coverage grade. Cameron Sutton was ranked number 39th with a 57.4. Substantially better. And then when you take a look at the passer rating in terms of man coverage compared to Carlton Davis, again, Carlton Davis gave up a 75.1, which was ranked for 24th. Cameron Sutton's was a 96.5, which was ranked for 45th. Substantially different. So, when you're talking about that, Dan Campbell is absolutely correct that Carlton Davis can definitely help in adding more man coverage to the defense. However, though, comma, there's always a but to kind of add to this sort of thing. The issue with Carlton Davis is not man coverage. It's zone coverage. Again, if you go back to last year, his zone coverage grade was absolutely atrocious. It was one of the worst in 2023. It was at, where was it? I'm trying to make sure I have this correct. Oh, yes. His zone coverage grade was ranked at 78th. 78, and I think it was out of like 82 qualifying grade markers. So it was like damn near the bottom. And his passer rating in zone coverage that he gave it was a 122.3, which again, was not very good. However, though, comma, it was still better than Cameron Sutton's because Cameron Sutton's was even worse. So again, to a degree, what Campbell is saying does make some sense in that Davis is a very solid man cover corner and that if what Glenn is wanting to do is to run more man coverage, it will definitely bring out the best not only in Carlton Davis, but in the defense. And furthermore, if Glenn starts dialing up more pressure due to that man defense coming off the edge and the interior with guys like, you know, DJ Reader, Betts, uh, Aiden Hutchinson, James Houston, and the rest of them, I definitely think that, ben that the main benefactor is going to be guys like Carlton Davis. And here's the reason why I say this. Again, like I said, from 2020 to 2022, Carlton Davis was playing at the top of his level. Again, you take a look at his stats during that period of time, 2020 to 2022, he gave up 140 completions to 245 attempts for 57.1 completion percentage rate, 1,754 yards, 10 touchdowns to 6 interceptions. That's pretty good. And the passer rating was an 84.6 during that span. Now, why does that the case? Why do I think that Carlton Davis looked that good during that period of time? I also did this little background check, too. I went back and I checked the advanced statistics for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 2020, 21, and 22 when it came to blitz percentage, when it came to pressure percentage, and when it came to sacks. Y'all want to know how good the Bucs were in that category? I'm going to put the stats up on the screen. In 2020, they were fifth in the league in blitz percentage, second in pressure percentage, and fourth in sacks. 2021, they were the number one blitzing defense, the number two pressure rated defense, and the number seventh sacking defense. And then in 2022, it kind of fell off a little bit, but still a pretty damn good defense. So think about it here. You start adding more man coverage to this defense, and then you start racking up the pressure because we've heard it from a lot of people, Dan Campbell and a lot of other players that have worked with Aaron Glenn. Aaron Glenn likes to be aggressive. He likes to blitz. He likes to pressure. You start adding those that, that pressure at that aspect, that blitz aspect, and then you get a man-to-man -man coverage corner like Carlton Davis, and you start running more man-to-man -man coverage schemes. It's going to result not only in the quarterback getting more sacks, 
but it's also going to result in cornerbacks getting more interceptions. Because think about it. You start playing tighter man-to-man -man coverage, that means the quarterback has to be much more accurate. And if he doesn't feel like he can thread the needle, he's going to hold on to the ball and take a sack. Or if it's a gotta-have-it play, he's going to try and thread that needle, which means it's a lot better option for the cornerback to get an interception. The point is, is we know the Lions are expecting big things from their defensive line unit this upcoming year. So if you put that defensive line unit to generate more pressure and more sacks, which when combined with a good man coverage, which is what the Lions are expecting out of Carlton Davis, then as Campbell says, as Campbell believes, you could potentially, and again, I place heavy emphasis on that word, potentially, potentially unlock Glenn's defense and finally get it to perform to the level that we've been wanting to see it do over the last three years. But I will say this, that's all well and good talk. I want to see it on the field. And I also know this much, I would much rather also have another good man cover corner opposite of Carlton Davis rather than him just being the only option. Now, whether that's Emmanuel Mosley and you somehow think he's going to be able to come back and play well, I don't know. But I also know this, I still would prefer to go out and get another cornerback in the draft to be paired on that field as well. Because it's like, listen, Manuel Mosley, I don't know if he's going to hold up. I want another guy out there alongside of Carlton Davis who can play pretty damn good man coverage as well. But we'll see what the Lions do. Having said that, I think this is a good place to end this episode. And with that, I'm going to say thank you all for watching yet another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. If you like what you saw, by all means, highly encourage all to watch the next episode. Also encourage all to do one of these three things, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. If by chance you subscribed in the past and forgot to do so at the time, or you just subscribed and you've not had a chance to do so, again, please subscribe. It helps me out. But also make sure you turn on that bell notification icon as well, so that way you never miss any more content that I push out. Again, subscription numbers are always going up, but we wanted to make sure you turn on that notification icon so that way as soon as I push something out, you guys can come right back to the channel. Also encourage y'all to share this content with your Lions friends and family members. Share here on YouTube, share it on Twitter, share it on Facebook, share it anywhere and everywhere you can with everybody and anybody that you can. The more we share it, the greater the channel grows, the greater the channel spreads. And with that being said, to everybody, I again just want to make sure you guys are being happy. I want to make sure you guys are doing well. Hope you got something that makes you smile. And I also hope hope that you guys enjoyed the content. And with that being said, again, you guys are an amazing crowd. You guys are an amazing community. I'm thankful for each and every one of y'all. I hope again you all had a happy Easter. And with that, God bless. And until the next time we meet, I'll see you all in the next episode.